there is a Zionist war on Russia. And you made me think of when Iraq was attacked in the First and Second Gulf Wars, it was when Russia was on its knees. And Russia had been a supporter of Iraq, historically. So, indeed, maybe separating, keeping Russia out of the picture is a Zionist goal. The Zionist goal is to force Russia on her knees in submission to NATO and to force China on her knees. China is reluctant to bow, but Russia is not just reluctant. Russia is now openly defiant. They were plotting for a long, long time. If you can connect the dots, that's all you need to do. They were plotting against Russia for more than a hundred years. They're the ones who brought about the Jewish Bolshevik Revolution. Russian Jews. That's an open secret. They are the ones who brought communism and the Soviet state, and the Soviet state served Zionist interests. It may have uh, protected the rights of workers and so on, but that was not the primary purpose. The primary purpose of the Soviet state was to serve Zionist interests. And that is the explanation for what happened in 1955, was it? When Nikita Khrushchev handed over Crimea, which is Russian territory, to Ukraine. What is happening now is that the Zionists are using their Ukrainian supporters as guinea pigs to serve their ends. The Armageddon or Malhama I want to suggest to you, Maris, has already commenced by proxy. And the writing is on the wall because Putin and the Russian armed forces and the Russian government and the Russian people are not bowing. They are in open defiance. If you want a war, you will get a war. We are not going to back down. That's Russia speaking today. We are not going to back down. And a war with Russia will ultimately be nuclear war. That's the price. Well, guess what? If nuclear war breaks out, who will be the first people to be destroyed? Answer? Ukraine. And they deserve it <laughs> for their foolishness, their stupidity. Rather than working out an agreement with Russia, which is mutually acceptable, so you can live together side by side peacefully. The Ukrainians who support the Zionists are now allowing themselves to be used as guinea pigs so that the Zionists can wage war on Russia by proxy. So the war has already commenced. They tried to do it in Syria. They did not succeed. And they're now succeeding in Ukraine. I think it's only a matter of time before Russia will have to intervene militarily. When you're killing sufficient Russians in Ukraine, then Russian public opinion will be so incensed that Putin will have no alternative but to intervene militarily. If there is an intervention, a Russian intervention militarily in Ukraine, I want to suggest to you, Morris, it makes no military sense whatsoever for it to be a piecemeal, part-time intervention. 
Russia will have to intervene decisively to achieve a fait accompli as she achieved in Crimea. Well, it seems it, you still have Slavs fighting Slavs and Christians fighting Christians. It's a win-win situation for the Zionists if Russia goes to war with Ukraine. No. No. No, I disagree. <laughs> Please. You see, in the, Quran, in the Quran, Allah speaks about those Muslims who become friends and allies of what we now recognize as the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance. And the Quran declares that those of you who join them, who become their supporters and friends and allies, you no longer belong to us, you now belong to them. So this will not be Christians, Christians. No. The ones, the ones who will be Christians would be Rome, which will be Russia and her allies. And the rest would be those who have, for all intents and purposes, abandoned Christianity and joined the Zionist Judeo-Christian Alliance. Thank you for the clarification. I don't think it's going to be long before Russia is sufficiently provoked uh, to intervene militarily in Ukraine. And we should wait for that event before we further to make any further analysis. But once Russia intervenes, or rather is forced to intervene militarily in Ukraine, it's at that time that we have to mobilize public opinion in the world of Islam to explain that this is taking place in accordance with guidance provided in the Quran in a surah entitled the Surah of the Cave. Have you ever looked at it, Morris? Uh, Do you I have, have a copy of the Quran, Morris? I've had many copies. I, I can't understand any old You're writings. Busy. You're too busy to read the Quran, I know. <laughs> okay. It's chapter 18, uh, the chapter of the cave. And this is the chapter of the Surah of Ex Eschatology, Paroxilas the most important chapter of the Qur'an or surah of the Qur'an which deals with eschatology or the end time. And it is a passage which takes us to Gog and Magog. It introduces Gog and Magog. And it speaks of someone who is known as Zul Karnain, a man who either has two horns the Arabic word kar can mean horn, or an event which applies to two ages. Kar can mean an age. But whenever the Quran uses the word kar, it always refers to the second meaning, an age, and never to the first meaning, a horn. Never. Uh, in the first of the two, two ages, in the first one, Power rested on the foundations of faith. And power was used in a territory located precisely where the Black Sea is now is. And Crimea, Crimea is in the Black Sea. Power was used in that area to punish the oppressor and to assist the, the oppressed. And powers were used to support those who had faith and whose conduct was righteous. In the second of the two events, Karnain, the second one, which is to occur in Akhiru Zaman, or the end time, the world will see power once again in that geographical area, resting on the foundations of faith. The power in that region is Russia. That's power. And power in Russia is now returning to a foundation of faith in Christianity after the collapse of communism. So I am suggesting to you that we are now witnessing what the Quran has spoken about. 
And if my analysis is correct, if my interpretation is correct, then when power is used by Putin to punish those who are now oppressing, using the armed forces of the country against the people, your own people, then that power will be successful in punishing the oppressor and in liberating the oppressed. It's only a matter of time we need to sit back and wait. There is more to it than that because the Quran goes on to speak about a journey to the east and then a third journey. But we can leave that for the time being.